Yeah, well, hello everyone, and welcome to a war racing league. Let me just check one thing. Sorry, hang on. Right, I apologise. <laughs> First of all, I apologise to anyone in the game chat who just heard that. My bad. I thought I was on uh, mute voice chat or game voice chat. My bad. So, anyway, <laughs> hello everyone. Welcome to. Uh, yeah, the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. I've started the stream live because I've got my tea now. 18 minutes qualifying in Azerbaijan. Hopefully I'll be back um, around halfway through qualifying. So I've just started the stream early. We've got 30 seconds until we get to the session. I'm going to go now. I'm not sure we're going to start spectating. So it's not going to be the most interesting quality session for the first part. But I will see you in a few minutes. Hopefully qualifying. Nothing too drastic happens whilst I'm gone. Rainers there. Is Mikhail here? Not yet. Hello, Ern. Right. I will see you guys in like a minute. Hang on.
don't think I've missed too much ladies and gentlemen I am back even if there is actually anyone watching let me have a check now uh, uh, seven people watching and uh, that says a lot about my commentary more people watch when I'm not here when than when I am brilliant well there yeah well I'm back I've never eaten tea so quickly um won't go into detail about the dinner it was very nice but um, I don't really see the point. This is Formula One. Right. On board with Creative Coconut. Only 13 drivers this weekend. Look, people are already leaving. We've gone down to six already. I'm a bit mad I can't race and we're fighting for the World Drivers uh, World Constructors Championship. How come you can't race? I know he said I think he said it last week, but um How come? Because I know that happens a few times anyway, sorry. Let's ride on uh, off board creative coconut on their out lap minions of course setting the benchmark time struggling a little bit they're out the pits possibly but um yeah minions as per usual setting the benchmark time a second and one tenth quicker than rainer rainer's lap i mean you know forest jump's not normally that close to rainer so maybe there's room for improvement on Rainer's lap. I imagine there is. Um, and here he is, out doing an out lap. So he's just behind uh, his uh, rival for today's race, Minions. If I have my money on someone winning, it's obviously these two. Uh, Zirbati somehow already out of qualifying. Not great for Zirbati there. Bendel, not set a lap. 35, not set a lap. You know, 35 has got pace and I did say I did briefly mention that as I was looking Mikhail isn't here it's a very good point you make uh, I believe what uh, totally no pro is not here so Rainer's just gonna start running away with it but yeah no like you say Mikhail um, not being here is, is quite big long lap then around Forrest Jump is second in the World Drivers' Championship. Yep, Forrest Jump it is a story of consistency. And honestly, he could... Honestly, if, if things plan out in these last four races, things could go his way. And I'm sure he has that in the back of his mind. Minions then. On the lap, yellow flags through sector one. That doesn't phase the Haas driver, right. Let's have a look at the driver's standings then. There is only an 18 point gap separating first and second. Rainer and Forrest jump. 18 points they're separated by. 
That gap could come down again today, like it has done over a few other races. Mikhail's up to third, which is an absolutely brilliant redemption drive. I think we saw Beast plays around. Oh, no, it's Bendel. Uh, minions. Anyway, Purple Sector 1. Keep going. Rainer behind. Can he match? Can he get a Purple Sector 1 in? He, he needs it. He, got, he improves by quite a bit, but he doesn't get the Purple Sector 1. We're back with the Haas. Uh, Mikhail, not here. And only one point off getting that second place spot. That's going to be painful for Mikhail. With only... How many races left to go? Uh, after this, we have only three races after Azerbaijan. So three races for Mikhail is probably more than enough to get him second. But first is slipping away. Totally no pro slips down to fourth as well, by the way. Missing consecutive races in a row. Dirty Spies fifth. Oh, no! That's a bad crash, that... And Minions, very lucky to survive and have the car still in, I say, one piece. His entire front wing is somewhere in the barriers. But he's lucky to have survived that one. It was a bit unprofessional the way I announced that crash because I kind of looked up in the corner of my eye from my phone. You can see Rainer flies past him. This is giving Rainer a big opportunity to uh, gain on minions then Rayner a 139.7 but he's still four tenths off that blistering pole lap from minions which by the way he was improving on he's scary he's a scary driver and we've got yellows double wave yellows throughout the track at the moment and kind of narrowed uh, slowed down a bit looks like minions is driving in the W11 what a car that was Possibly just the most incredible feat of engineering F1's ever seen. I think that car was perfect, the W11. I genuinely think it was the perfect F1 car. I don't think there was a fault with it. Except for the uh, odd few uh, punctures here and there. Minions disagrees with her and saying, nah, he's not driving the W11. It's purely skill, I'm guessing, Minions. Means in Spinzi, I trust, says Owen. He's our reserve. Well, he's down in 11th right now, so I don't know how much faith I'd have in him. I'm only messing, of course. Spinzi clearly probably has a lot more left in the tank there, I'd imagine. Forest jump going excruciatingly slow. Um, but no one else is really in the title fight. It's just between these three at the front, Mikhail, Forest jump, and Rayner, and only two of them have showed up. Of course, it's skill. The cars are equal performance. Yeah, cool. Well, I'm just uh, just uh, having a bit of a mess around. I mean, you never know. Minions might have found some sort of cheat code. Put a rocket ship on the back. It wouldn't surprise me. He's rapid. But no, in all seriousness, fair play to uh, anyone who's able to drive that quickly. Um, consistently as well. Let's just hope he can keep it. Thomas Ronha. Oh, yeah. Thomas Ronha with the grip hacks. Thomas Ronhart, if you're watching, I'm not fussed. Y'all know what, we're clear. Stop cheating. Right, any, anyway, get my views out of the way. Here's Forrest Jump giving his teammate a very nice toe down to... What is going on? Why has he stayed out? I'm a little bit confused by the Rebel strategy there. Rayner and Minions both in the pits. Dirty Spike on a lap now. We'll ride on ball with a papaya orange McLaren with a very similar uh, helmet as well. This has turned into more of a comedy show than a commentary. Well, you know what? It's qualifying, so it's all a bit of banter in qualifying. It's the race where I tend to get quite serious, but we can have a little bit of fun in qualifying. I don't mind that. Just in the race, that's when we uh, have to get serious and technical and stuff. And, but uh, it's qualifying, like I say, so... Might as well enjoy it. Nice and laid back. Uh, shot maker then. Down in eighth, but three tenths up on a lap through the castle section. How does the rebel driver handle it? He handles it very well indeed. It's very, very difficult and very actually quite scary driving through um, the castle section. But shot maker made it look easy. Right, let's see what he can do on this lap. Can the Red Bull driver? Get up the order, he's three seconds. 
off pole. And it just shows the golfing quality. There's so much room for error around such a long track like Azerbaijan. And I need to get my track map up. So give me un momento. Let's see then, shot maker stays 8th, improves, but stays 8th, I believe. Syndra then, 7th on an outlap. Most people run outlap and we've only got a minute and 30 seconds left of qualifying. Uh, laps are going to start falling here. You best believe it. I'm really, my track map is not, no, it always does this. Oh, hang on. Here we go. Bit of fiddling. We've got it up and working. Lovely stuff there. Right. Minions. Rainer's still in the pits, and I think that's qualifying over for Rainer. No more laps. It's all on minions. Can he keep the car in one piece and can he keep it on pole? I imagine so. B place has gone third. Well, race control is here at least, yes. Welcome back, race control home. Ernest Ash, let's hope. No Williams bias, please. Rain of the tie from the session. And a purple middle sector from Minions is, I imagine, going to help him see out what's been a very dominant qualifying performance. The Haas driver has just got to keep the car in a straight line. If he heads to the line, what's this going to be from Minions? It's incredible. It's a 139.1. And he's gone miles clear of P2. Beast plays one more lap, three hundredths of a second up on his time. The Papaya Orange McLaren of 30 Spy crosses the line to start his lap. No, I think that was that was the last lap. Well, no one else is going to be able to set any more lap times. We see Forrest Jump making his way down, getting a lovely toe from his teammate. Only good enough for fifth and creative coconut. I mean, I don't want to slander creative coconut, but it's not often you see them up where they are now. P4 is a very good result, and it seems like the hash driver might still be on a lap. I'm not entirely sure. In the castle section, they're about to go. I don't think Bendel's about to uh, cross the line, actually. And it, it's all, oh, it's good enough for C. 141 flat, good lap from Bendel. Not good enough to crack into the top five. Can Creative Coconut... What am I even saying? Can Creative Coconut put the Haas car even higher up the order to join his counterpart in Minions? We'll have to wait and see. There's only a few more corners remaining. And then what is actually the longest straight in Formula 1? Oh no, retirement from the session. And uh, no more lap to be set there. Dirty Spy though, a second off on his time. Is there to be late drama from the Haas driver? Not the Haas driver, the McLaren driver. I am extremely apologetic. Let's see then. The McLaren driver of Dirty Spy. Is he back with redemption? He's going to cross the line. It's good enough for third. Good lap. 139.9. Almost in the, just, just under the 140s. It's a good lap. It's good enough for third. Young leader is the only person left to set their lap time. But if the thing in the top right is correct, then he's on a 2 minute and 20 second lap. And I mean, yeah, he doesn't exactly seem to be powering it down the straight. I think that puts qualifying to a close, ladies and gentlemen. And here's your pole seer, Minions, P2 Rainer and P3 Dirty Spy. Is the hunt back on for the McLaren driver? I don't even think it's physically possible for him to win the championship now. But I'm sure he'll try and maximise his position in the championship. He'll do what he needs to get high in this race. He's done well in qualifying. Let's see what he can do on the Sunday. It's Minions on pole in the Haas team, and it's a return to the front row for the guy as well. I know he's got so much pace. Six and a half tenths nearly. The gap from him to second 
place and he's just rapid. Reyna is by no means a slow driver. One of the quickest in the league, but he, he gets made look like an amateur every time this guy comes to race. I mean, he's just insane. If Minions consistently drove, I mean, Rayner would have something to worry about. But luckily for Rayner, he doesn't. Hopefully, Rayner doesn't bin it for his his sake in the championship. But he's looking quite comfortable. Can Forrest Jump do anything from P6? Creative Coconut P5, very good and notable position from the hash driver as well i still need to set my track map up i know i lied before it's not fully set up but goodness sake hang on <laughs> um here we go and there we go right oh no here we go holla best comes ever haha <laughs> see you later good luck forest thank you also for the uh, compliment, I do appreciate it. Good luck. Obviously, being second in the championship, Forrest. Bit of pressure building up. Bit of a uh, dark horse. Would that be the correct term? Not sure, but uh, you, you definitely not someone... No offence, I would have expected to be fighting for the championship this year. And you're still a few points off 18. But anything can happen. All it takes is a second place. And the DNF from Rayner... <laughs> I mean, you're leading the championship, mate. So, good luck to you. We've got nine people watching, and to those nine people, I say good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in the uh, world. We are going to enable all the stuff that I like to have enabled for the race, and that's pretty much it, actually. Damn, I want to commentate on this track so bad. Looks fun. Honestly, I hate driving Baku. I can't lie. It's chaos. It absolutely is. Ziabati disqualified from qualifying, disqualified from uh, the formation lap as well, alongside Weimart, who had the exact same fate in qualifying as well. We want minions trying to get some heat into those tyres. You got Rayner behind him, who's gonna just—he's just gonna absolutely send it. I—he well, doesn't have to. I say that, but I think I've just lied because I don't actually think that Rayner will do that. He's got a comfortable championship lead. He wasn't DQ'd in quality, he just left. Fair enough. Uh, Rayner. He's got a comfortable championship lead of 18 points to Forrest Jump. And he knows he's faster than him. And Rayner's consistent. Forrest Jump's ridiculously consistent. But all Rayner has to do is finish ahead of him. And he's just getting comfortable. And co He doesn't have to do anything crazy on minions. He doesn't have to defend anything crazy with Dirty Spy. The question is, will he? I think Rayner is an extremely smart driver, and I think he'll make the right decision this race. I think I don't think we'll see him very aggressive for the rest of the season. Dirty Spy, on the other hand, we'll see him very aggressive. He missed a few races, uh, crashed out a few races as well. He'll be desperate to get back in a high point scoring position. Beast plays second race I think I've ever seen him driven at. Had some very kind words at the end of last race, so I do appreciate that. Um, Let's see what the Mercedes can do. Can he finally break the Mercedes curse? Bendel nearly did last time, but a poor strategy call meant that he... Yeah, it just went all wrong for the uh, poor Mercedes driver. Creative Coconut P5. I don't know where the best qualifying position was for Creative Coconut in their history in Aurora Racing League, but this has got to be up there. Really good showing. Forrest John P2 in the championship. I'm surprised by it, but he's Mr. Consistent. What can he do this race? Bendel behind. Th threw it away last race. I mean, he just destined for so much more. Is it time for redemption from P7? Maybe not, but we'll have to wait and see. Because we wait here before turn one at Baku. Here in the beautiful country of Azerbaijan. This is one of my favourite street circuits. And I'm sure many of you will agree. We wait for the lights to turn on. And here they are, ahead for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. It's lights out and away we go. Slow start, but that's just because of the screen freeze. Good start from Minions. Brilliant, brilliant start from the Mercedes of Beast Plays. Putting Rayner under all kinds of pressure here. Straight away, we look at the rear wing. Going in to turn two. Oh no, oh, no that's a spin. It's a spin, Beast Plays. Drops to the back, and the Mercedes curse continues. Creative Coconut finds himself in P3. Off the race stop, Forest Jump P4. Bendel P5. 
Young leader P6, 35 back up to P6 with a beautiful send down the inside on the Ferrari. Minions gets away well. Rayner keeping slightly close, but look at the gap from P2 to P3 already. It's already three seconds, and Forrest Jump is in hot pursuit of that Haas car in front of him. I'm not sure what happened off the start there. Beast plays got a horrendous start. I feel really bad now because just the spin, I'm not sure if he got tagged on the rear urn. You can maybe have a better uh, look at that than I do because I was trying to look up the uh, order and have a look at the corners as well. But it just kind of looked like he went round. I'm not sure if there was any contact. But that's just really unlucky for Beast plays. Let's see what he can do uh, in the race to come. But Creative Coconut in a podium position. This is really good from the hash driver. Uh, there wasn't, he just spun, right. Uh, if that's true, uh, then that's just really, really unfortunate for Beast Plays. Just a bit too trigger happy on the throttle. And it makes all the difference. Lovely camera angles, as you can see, that beautiful looking Haas. I've got to say, a lot of people don't like the look of that car. I think it's so clean, especially in the daylight like this. And the sparks flying off the rear end as it powers down the straight. Minion sets the fastest lap, of course. That standard of the first lap. And look at this. We've got all kinds of pressure from Bendel on Dirty Spy. The McLaren and the Mercedes battling it out. But I think it was Dirty Spy ultimately who made the overtake actually. Uh, and Bendel was just trying to get back. Dirty Spy then up into fifth. Not a bad start from the McLaren driver. Uh, let's see what else we can see from him for the rest of this race. Young leader down in P7. His teammate Rayner P2. And uh, you can already see a lofty gap beginning to form. Dirty Spy's fast. Don't think Bendel had a chance. No, uh, I agree. Um, Dirty Spy, what a rapid driver. But some, sometimes he really puts it together on quality, and other times he just doesn't. But he is rapid. Um, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if he even got a podium this race. His next target is Forrest Jump. And the big news for me is that Forrest Jump is not closing down. On Creative Coconut, the Haas driver, I mean, it's a big surprise for me. He's doing really, really well. Fair play to him through the castle section. You've got the Williams and the Alpine following very, very closely. Indeed, Spinzy, the reserve driver for Williams, just powering out the corner. And that's Beast Plays down the inside. Didn't see that coming. Oh, no. Loses the rear end and tags the wall. Back down the inside. What's going on here? And that was a move of desperation from Beast Plays. And I don't think the stewards are going to like one bit. We've got Bendel here. All over the rear end of Dirty Spy. And it shows how much the slipstream and the toe really makes a difference around here. Forrest Jump only a few tenths off Creative Coconut now. But you can see Bendel fighting back against Dirty Spy. And into turn one we go. The inside line favours the McLaren. And the Mercedes just has to slot in behind for the remainder of this lap. Lap two, lap two, sorry, turn two. And DRS, it is enabled. Terrible camera angle, but this might be a brilliant move. Down the inside, and the McLaren breaks later and in turn manages to keep the position. But this is actually really close racing. Do they make contact in the rear end there? Does Bendel... Just slightly tagged Dirty Spy. I'm not sure if he did. It didn't look like it had too bad uh, consequences. But all this battling is bringing Young Leader ever so closer uh, to them. But how close? Uh, how close is it? Is it close enough? We can see Forrest Jump up the road getting closer to Creative Coconut now. And the hash driver's got to think, do we battle for P3 but risk? A, making contact, and B, having stuff happen behind where more and more drivers get parked up and eventually they all come streaming past where we've got a huge, huge straight ahead of us. Like I said in qualifying, the longest in Formula 1. And you only get DRS for a small portion of this straight, to be in fairness. Uh, if you think about how long the straight is. But it's not really necessary the whole way because look at how close the Red Bull's going to get to the Haas and he gets DRS now it's deployed for the Red Bull driver the Haas takes him to the inside he reacts late he's going to go try and stick it round the outside he's on the hard compound tyre by the way 
so it's slightly harder. Oh no, Spinzy Shizzles left the uh, left the session. I'm not sure if there's a retirement there from the Williams or if he's just a disconnect uh, issue. But look at how close the Red Bull is to the Haas this time. Inside or outside, it's going to be the outside line for Forrest Jump. And in to that 90 degree left hander with a very tight line. He's ahead of the Haas driver and it's a nice overtake down the straight from Forrest Jump up into the podium positions. And Dirty Spy will be looking to get closer to Creative Coconut and try and get into the podium position. So, well, Bendel's dropped off now, and that battle's not really happening. Young Leader, very close to the back of Bendel in comparison to the last few laps. And Zio Batty Spore and Weemot coming together. Weemot has no front wing. That's interesting uh, for the Alpine. I'm sure that's going to throw a curveball in their strategy. You can see. I think that's Zio Batty trying to get past. But uh, can't find a way at the moment. Even though the Weemart, the Weemart has that uh, front wing damage. It just means that he's going very slowly in front. Uh, we look further up the order again. Uh, sorry, I'm going down the order. Further up the order to Young Leader. And he is close to the back of Bendel. But is he, is he close enough? Well, that will be the cr question that will be answered very soon. Pretty much now. They start this fast flowing section that opens up onto an extremely long straight. I mean, I know I say it every lap, but it's ridiculous. This straight, the speeds they reach, he's already 210 with ERS being deployed and DRS enabled. You can see on his racing wheel there, 215. He's going to reach like 220 here. Into turn one we go. He's not close enough to the back of Bendel, however. And the Mercedes lives to fight another lap. Looking down the order, Weimar is actually behind and he's not pitting with that front wing. Now he is. And he just Weimarts his way into the pit lane. Very cautious, as he should be. Young leader getting closer on the straights, but everywhere else on the track, he's starting to lose time to the Mercedes. That's going to be where Bendel needs to pull away. Apart from that, the track seems to have died down. For now, Young Leader will just drop further and further back from Bendel, I imagine. Uh, they may look close, but uh, it's still quite far back. Right, the infamous castle section. Arguably one of the most infinite, infamous corners in Formula 1 history. And you can see Young Leader extremely cautious through there. Loses about a tenth to Bendel, who may be... Putting a bit more on the line, and now you can see... Oh, yellow flags in Sector 2. Yellow flags in Sector 2. It's Zio Batty Spore. Uh, no damage done, though. And no safety car, virtual safety car, or a temporary double wave yellow flags will be needed for that situation. Young Leader drops out of a second of the slipstream of Bendel, which means no DRS to assist him down this straight. And that's not going to help the Ferrari driver one bit. Dirty Spy is getting closer to Creative Coconut. And this will be the next battle. Look at how much closer the McLaren driver is. Before, he was about a second off. Now he's only three tenths off. That's the power of a slipstream and a DRS down that straight. You can see going into turn two. And, uh, yeah, DRS yet again for the Papaya Orange McLaren. And it will eventually leave Creative Coconut defenseless. He's too far back to try and move yet, but he gets perilously close to the back of the Haas car. And uh, has to take evasive action just to not go into the back of it. That's going to hurt Dirty Spice tyres and also his chances of getting an overtake done uh, quickly. Little bit of an error. Yeah, lock the brakes. Quite obvious. I think he just went in too hot. Realised he was nearly going to go into the back of Creative Coconut and had to straighten out to avoid it. That's... Uh, gonna hurt his lap time a little bit and just gonna postpone um, his overtaking opportunity on the Haas driver if the opportunity uh, arises which I imagine it will in the upcoming laps unless one of them pits 26 laps around this circuit doesn't seem like a lot but it is because each lap is about what, 1 minute 40 uh, lucky for him he was in a corner which allows a slight mistake yeah well if it was a uh, you know, there's a few places on this track where if he had made that same mistake, he would have been punished for it. You get a lovely, lovely aerial view, and these are my. This is one of my favourite things about commentating F1. 
Look at this. Absolutely stunning scenes from the helicopter. You can see the McLaren hunting down the house. DRS wide open. Is he evil? He's definitely getting closer. That's that's not a question. That's a fact. But is he getting close enough? That's a question. Well, we go through turn two, and on the run down to turn three, he's going to get another dosage of uh, DRS, and he's a lot closer this time than he was last. Dirty Spy might be waving goodbye to Creative Coconut for the time being, because down the inside he goes, he makes the move before the braking zone, and yeah, it's just the pace advantage in a straight line. Dirty Spy up to fourth, Creative Coconut fifth, still a very respectable result. Hopefully Creative Coconut doesn't let his head drop. And I, I don't think he should fight this battle with Dirty Spy. I don't think he should, like, really push the car to try and keep behind him. Maybe we try and keep within a second, but even that's going to be really difficult because he's just so quick. Um, forest jump, then three seconds up the road from Dirty Spy. In P3, right behind his championship rival, uh, Reyna, who's in P2. And six and a half seconds up the road is Minions, who uh, pretty much hasn't had to do anything all race. Looking down the order, looking at the timing screen in particular. And uh, it looks like Creative Coconut is about to drop outside of a second. And there it is. Will he pick up DRS? Down the straight, a fastest lap from Minions is a 143.6. When he was setting 139s in qualifying, it shows how much slower race pace is. He is on mediums, uh, to be fair, but... Is it about he's retired from the session? Ooh. Interesting from the Alpha Tower. He doesn't look like it's a... Um, DNF mechanical, and it doesn't look like... A, a car... Like an actual crash. I think he's just given up. Interesting. Uh, Rainer is not finding an answer. Well, it's difficult to find an answer, really. Um... You can be one of the fastest in the league, but like they say, there's always a bigger fish in the sea, and that fish is Minions. And he's just rapid at every track he goes to. Sometimes he lacks consistency, but he isn't showing a lack of consistency here. He, he just isn't. And it's not like they're ridiculously far apart either. It's just that they are. <laughs> I, I don't... No, I'm trying to sugarcoat it the best I can, but Minions kind of flying away with this one. We're going to check the tyres because I don't think anyone's close. So we uh, do have a second. And uh, Minions on mediums, Rainer on mediums. That's at least one positive news. Imagine if Minions was on the hards and Rainer was this far off on mediums. At least he's not. Forest jump on hards, Dirty Spy on hards. And that shows the pace of these two drivers on hards, but still three and four. Still a long time left to go. Uh, still a long time, sorry. Still a long time left, don't get excited. Uh, I mean, it just, it's one of those tracks, really. I don't imagine, no one's got any penalties yet. I'm sure that'll change now because I've said it, but uh, we've had four drivers stop, and I'm pretty sure that's all for... Um, damage uh, well we'll do a gap to the leader for now and you can see Spinzy all the way at the back is off 1 minute and 13 seconds off the lead ridiculous it's just incredible isn't it um but the the, the uh yeah he's getting close to being lapped well still quite a few seconds away just because of the length of this lap I'd say about fit uh, like 37 seconds, but I mean you're not wrong. At this rate, he will be getting lapped. I don't think it's his fault. I just think Minions is really quick, and Spins is clearly not as fast. Like you know, over one lap, it, it doesn't seem that bad. But when you put it into you know, it's only been nine laps, and that looked like a bit twitchy on the rear end from Young Leader. Is he? Having some problems, maybe. Baku is a difficult track with this handling model. I absolutely agree. I think I said it last week. I probably said it the week before as well. 
the handling model on this year's game is just atrocious. I mean, I never played F1 2020, but a lot of people really like that. F1 2021, I really like that. Now, hmm, Minions, I don't know if this is some sort of flex. I don't know if this is actually him typing, but he's just typed in chat high. He's seven seconds in the lead. F120 was a beautiful game, never played it, uh, never had it actually. Had F1 2019, not bad that one. Uh, never got 20, apparently it was really, really good. I'm not too fast. Minions is chilling. Well, clearly, because he's telling us in chat whilst he leads the race. Trust me, it's ideal. Well, I mean, it probably was, wasn't it? F1 2021, a lot of people complained about the handling model there, but I... That's the kind of the game that I spent loads and loads of time on. And uh, Young Leader in the pits, by the way. Let's see what the Ferrari guys can do. Well, we missed it. Well, it must have been good, because they're out quick. He does get overtaken by Syndro. Will he get overtaken by Shotmaker as well? Not immediately. Does Shotmaker have an answer? No, I think he's too far back. Um, But, uh, ooh, ooh, no, 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 Syndro. I saw him lose the rear. I flicked away and I come back and he's in the wall. That's a front wing gone. You can see the... Yeah, that's not good. Syndro gets the car front facing again as his teammate goes flying by. Yep, that is the wave yellows in sector one as they try and remove that debris at the beginning of the circuit two. Yeah, that's, that's a painful place to spin. He's got to go... For an entire lap before he can get to the pits. That is a difficult one. Shot maker. Putting Young Leader under a lot of pressure. And Young Leader is making a lot of mistakes in this one particular section. On the run up to the castle section. Minion saying he won't choke this. <laughs> Earn. Questioning that. We will see he says. I, this is surreal. I'm speaking to the guy who's leading the race. But I'm he's like... Typing it in chat, yeah, flexing, yeah, clearly, mate. He's is in incredible, and if Rain is listening, I'm sure he'll be a bit confused himself. Um, shot maker then, putting Young Leader under a bit of pressure, but I think Young Leader's coping well apart from that one castle section area where he keeps losing the rear. Oh dear, oh dear, I don't even know what to say. That is horrendous, that's a really, really bad crash. And we can see it from the perspective of Weimar. Safety car deployed, and I'm not surprised. Young leader into the barriers. Took too wide of a line. Whoa, Weimar. Driving right through the debris there. I genuinely thought he was just going to collect him. Ooh. Syndro tagging the side as well. Young leader, I am very, very sorry. Because I was just going, I think he's handling the pressure well. Except for that one castle section when I said that. He ended up in a wall and out of the race with a pretty severe crash. This is good for Syndro because it means he can get that front wing back on and not lose anything from it. Young leader leaves. It's really unfortunate. He was in a decent position in this race, but it changes quite a lot. Will Minions pit? We'll have to wait and see. The Hash driver. Lovely, lovely shot. Just, I'm in love. And he does. Into the pits he goes. What tyre will it be for the Haas driver? And also, will we see any speeding people into the pits? Because that's where you get a lot of... Uh, well, I knew I would crash. It is unfortunate. Minions saying he's not pitting. No, nope. Minions has stayed out. Forrest jumps the new leader. Minions now beside me in his pit box, switching to the hard. Oh, yeah, Ted Kravitz time. Yeah, I just realised that's a beautiful salt. Cheers, Ted. <laughs> um, no forest jump then. Leads. Should he have pit? I think so, but he's on hards. Yeah, I, it's, a, it's a tough track, isn't it? It's very, very mentally frustrating. And I know you were having a few problems as well. Did Rain appear? I didn't notice. I think he did, because otherwise he'd be ahead. We can check the tyres now. How about that? Detail. Tyre. Yes. Everyone's pit except for Beast. Plays in the pits, so never mind. 
Weemart will probably go into the pit. And Forest Jump. Though he's by going to struggle on the mediums, I was on 65% after 11 laps. Wow. That is not great at all. Though he's by trying to go to the end on those mediums. Will it work? I, I mean, if it does, he's like the uh, the tire whisperer. Right. Sorry, I don't really know uh, what that. Was. Ooh, sorry, hit the microphone there. I know what that was. The safety car messed my race up a bit. Says Bendel. Uh, just try and capitalise off it. And please, for the love of God, Bendel, you've pit, haven't you? You've you've pit because last race. I'm rooting for Reina. Let's go for the team. Yeah, well, totally no pro. Oh, no, totally no pro. So sorry, young leader. Young leader. I know it's an unfortunate race. It's an unfortunate way, way to go, but please do stick around. Because, you know, we've still got quite a few racing laps. I'd say we've probably got... Probably have, like, 12 racing laps left. Yes, it came out... Uh, it came out of the pits, and I've pit again for mediums. Has he pit? I was role-playing when the chaos was happening. Good stuff, Owen. <laughs> right. Well, you can see them all. Behind the safety car, Bert Mylander, Syndro, so far back, but he's gotten quite lucky with the whole front wing situation. To be fair, I have rear wing damage from lap one. How have you managed rear wing damage? I have that 10 Kravitz in me. How have you got, how have you got, uh, that's interesting actually, how have you got rear wing damage? I'm curious, is it, did another driver like tag you or something? Or... Something else, that's really weird one to get. I got hit from the back. Because I think... I'm not trying to blame anyone here, but I think... Who were you fighting? Who who was it? Because I think I... Weemot. I definitely saw someone tag someone in the back. I can't remember if it was you. So that's why you couldn't catch Bendel. Ah, oh, Bendel, Bendel is... Oh, Syndra's retired from the session. Oh, no. They're dropping like flies. And on lap 13, under a safety car, we're down to 10. If you can finish the race, congratulations, you'll pick up one world champion point at least. So uh, if you are driving, stick around. And if you're watching, stick around because the race is really only getting started. Forrest jump then. P1 for now, but he hasn't pit. I mean, he was so fast anyway. I, I don't know if I would have caught, could have caught, could have caught him. Uh, it says young leader uh, regarding Bendel. Good little compliment there for Bendel. <laughs> but my zero zero is defo slower. If, it, if I had the rear wing, it would have been quicker. Yeah, drag. Aerodynamics. I understand that stuff. <laughs> Forest jump then. P1, no way you run zero zero here. Earn, can't believe it. Absolute shock from Ted Kravitz. Um, minions, I mean, he is not going to let Forrest Jump have P1. Minions, you know, I think Forrest Jump's best bet, he'll lead for the first three laps. Three, three corners before Minions gets past. That's a best case scenario, because Minions, Minions is not playing today. Rayner, he's a bit lenient, but also Forrest Jump does need to finish ahead of him. Reina knows Forrest Jump asking for death with his idea to not box. Well, it was kind of like Bendel's last week. It was, um, I think the quote was something along the lines of, well, it's my only chance to win, so I might as well go for it. I love the passion. I love the audacity. I didn't love the execution, Bendel, unfortunately. Um, I don't actually, I can't even remember where you finished that race. I, I just know it wasn't good. Uh, it's a shame though. Um, um, yeah. Oh, hang on a minute. I'm having a bit, far too many technical difficulties today. All my fault, by the way. I keep like hitting things. Right, Forest jumps. Forest jump, pulling my struts, to which I <laughs> say that. Yeah, um, Bendel knows from experience. Um, would you believe it? Singapore was very annoying. Car slides after 15% were. It's just certain tracks on this game, and you know what? I love Suzuka as a racetrack, but I 
I can't drive it. It's my worst track on this game. I can't drive. I don't know why. But I, I just can't. I just can't do Suzuka. Love it as a track. Every other game, I'm, I'm Gran Turismo. Uh, I can't stand Jeddah. Oh, Jeddah is horrendous. Yeah, I love Jeddah. Can't drive it. It's it's terrible, isn't it? I I just yeah, it's one of those that are really difficult to drive, aren't they? I'm not a massive fan. Used to do a bit of e uh, esports. Bloody hell, who do I think I am? <laughs> esports. Oh, well, I mean, technically it is electronic sports, isn't it? I'm not wrong, it just makes it sound very professional. I'm not saying it's not. These guys are getting a million a week, you know. Forrest Jump, he has a penthouse. Messi used to skip school to watch Forrest Jump play football, then he went to F1. My money is on minions. <laughs> I, yeah, well, to be honest, I think it's a safe bet. Safety car in this lap, then, well, we will see. Minions, I reckon we'll probably have Forest jump by a few corners, and I probably shouldn't be saying that as a commentator because I'm meant to be unbiased. But it's not biased, it's, it's just observation. And I'm sure Martin Brundle would say something along the lines of it as well, because it's an absurd strategy call from Forest Jump. I think he really wants the hard strategy to work. And if he can get it to work, fair dues to him. He needs to do everything he can to close that gap to Rayner. And um, anything he can do... The best chance he has is taking a gamble and trying to finish ahead of him. When does the Red Bull driver go? And will Minions be able to stick to the back of him? A lot of weaving down the straight. Still weaving down the straight, but he's gone. ERS kicks in. Minions initially not able to stick with him. Rayner not sticking with him either. And side by side, it's Rayner. Minions, three abreast. Who's that round the outside? It's Bendel. And no, we've had someone spin around at the back. And it's Weimar and Shotmaker as well. So a bit of a chaotic start. Forrest Jump then leads. Going through turn two as well. Down the straight we go. Minions, though, all over the back of him. And I said he might leave for three corners. And I was pretty much right because around the outside goes Minions to retake the lead of the race. And Rayner is going to be eyeing on that pizza as well. And yet, there it is. Forrest Jump a bit deep and uh, Rayner ready to capitalise into the left-hander and he's up to P2. Forrest jumped down to P3 from P1 and I was right about the three corners. Now Dewey's by P4 and the, uh, McLaren. There was three abreast and those three abreast into turn one was Dirty's by Creative Coconut and Bendel. And this is their position now, fourth, fifth and sixth. So they're still all together. These guys having a good bit of racing going on. A lot of support for Rayner in the chat. Can he catch, sorry, can he catch minions? Well, I was going to say, can he catch million, minions? And then I looked at the time and he was like, uh, you know, a second behind already. The pace is ridiculous. Unbelievable. Dirty spy all over the back of Forest Jump. And this is just not going swimmingly at all for Forest Jump. The strategy he wanted to do has by no means paid off. And he's virtually getting pushed through these corners by Dirty Spy. And he just goes past. And there's no chance for him because of the slipstream. And there's no chance for him again on Creative Coconut. And he goes from third to fifth in one straight. And what? And he's pit. He's pit. Forrest Jump, he's pit. So Beast plays and Bendel, the two Mercedes guys, battling it out. Bendel P6, Beast plays P5, and down the inside, Beast plays, no, that was Bendel down the inside, Beast plays is on the outside, and you can look at these two, battling, battling it out for P5, Bendel, is he going to try it down the inside, of course he's going to try it down the inside, it's an audacious move, but Beast plays has it covered for now, through the right hander, it's a technical section, and Beast plays has not got it right at all, but here, they come, a very sharp left-hander and around the outside goes Bendel and Beast plays, tags the inside wall. No visible damage there and Spinzy is just watching this unfold in front of him. Now we need to have a focus our eyes though on Dewey Spy and Rayner. They're quite close together but I want to have a look at this battle between the two uh, Mercedes. No team orders down at the, uh, the garage where the uh, car from Brackley uh, is situated. I don't know why I, I said that instead of just saying the Mercedes garage, but there you go. Dirty Spy now a second behind Rainer, and I think he lost time through the castle section, just trying to be a bit cautious. Make it through in one piece. Oh no! No, no! What a huge crash! 
and it's bees plays into the wall the pirelli yellow wall and i'm not sure what happened my best bet is that he rode that curb on the inside lost steering and hit it and there's another safety car and you can see from the aerial view it is a big quite a bad crash that i mean i'm sure the driver would be okay in real life but i mean you can't see it but the, there would be a bit of debris on track see on board and um yeah not great at all yeah my my wing was messed up from the guy who spun out in front of me that would have been uh, spinzy or weimar i think someone oh maybe no maybe shot maker i'm not sure they all kind of ended up at the back somehow well i'll tell you what this man right here shocking restart call i'm sorry forrest <laughs> shocking restart call but uh he's got a second chance he's got a lifeline in the form of a beast plays incident so beast you're you are in the comments i'm i'm gonna ask you was the crash just kind of front wing and you couldn't so right um i'm trying to I'm trying to figure out how to word this right so my question is was the crash front wing damage and then you just kind of <laughs> front wing skill breaking i like that i like that i like how you were uh, skill no i i do respect you know not just fully blaming the car but no i, I know what you mean braking yeah obviously no more safety car please boys minions getting a bit worried up front is there to be a wiimart masterclass from eighth to first in one corner minions you better watch out the alpine driver not ready to hold back minions claiming he's not worried Exactly what a worried person would say. It's just getting late, you know. Fair enough, fair enough. To be fair, I'm just being nice because I'm. I'm <laughs> if I want, I'm faster than minions, says uh, young leader or Paolo. Which one would you rather me? Uh, which one would you rather me call you, uh, Paolo or young leader? Because honestly, it's up to you. I, I I know a lot of the time people will come back and say, oh, it's up to you, but I, I don't like making that decision. I don't know why. I just. I just prefer if people just gave me a name because I can stick by it. I want to know who spun into turn one because I was P3. Yeah, it's, a, it's rough that, you know. That is the problem with uh, league racing. I mean, to be fair, it would not surprise me if I pinned it because I'm so cocky, says Binions. I don't mind, haha, you said my name. Well, uh, well, most people can't say it. Paolo. God, most people can't say that. That's just... That's shocking. Well, I'll I'll call you Paolo then. If I can if I can pronounce Paolo fine, then Paolo it is. I'll um I think I'll probably still when you're racing, I'll still call you Young Leader because that's the name I see on screen. So and that's the one I called you before. But uh in the comments I'll call you Paolo. That's that's easier. Right, cool. Thank you for that one. I just want to be uh, respectful and stuff of people's names because obviously like I don't know. I don't want to misname people and I also hate mispronouncing like. Some some people in this league have some interesting names that I str I'm honestly struggle to pronounce. Even Rayner. I, I'm not even 100%... Yeah, earn and then earnest, that's when you're racing. Exactly. I It's just kind of... It's an on it's an on off thing. I, 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 don't re I don't really think about it. It's just because earnest has the name in front of me, so that's the, just the one I say. I used to call Mikhail Mikhail. Um... I want to know why my engineer put me on used mediums that are 25 where... I did tell you to call me Ern. I think you said I could call you anything. Ernest or Ern, whatever's easier. I hate a Ferrari, says Beast. I feel like your uh, engineers kind of screwed your race over a little bit there, but um, I, I'd, I'd, uh, I'd write a report to the steward. Maybe there's a little bit of a inside, um, I don't know. So you drive for Mercedes. Maybe uh, Red Bull, Shotmaker and Forest Jump. Maybe they've been uh, planting some of their engineers in your garage and trying to sabotage your races. Hold on, I'll get the... Oh, we're talking about racing wheels now in the comments as well. What a lovely community. I've got the Thrustmaster T248. No one asked me, but I just... I like talking about it. 
good start wheel the shifters are extremely loud i can click one for you now very quickly that's quite far back as well i normally have that closer to the microphone but it's quite loud i won't oh respect that from uh, paolo young leader he won't re uh, re re won't report the rear wing because we marked his boy fair play minions has gone Raider reacts, but not quick enough. And someone who's reacted quite quickly is Creative Coconut, and he might be a bit uh, close. But he, he, but he isn't. He just isn't, and that's just me. My bad, but three abreast then. Going into turn one. That was last time. Uh, the save is what spins he. Ghosting for some reason. Forest jump. Then up to P6. Weemar P7. Shot maker P8. And Bendel sliding into the back in P9. Um, interesting battle going on at the back. Dirty Spy getting close to the back of Raynan, but we're just going to look further behind the order because Spinzy still ghosting, battling it out with Weemot, and Weemot gets through Shotmaker, and Bendel also battling it out there. Shotmaker with the inside line, and he keeps it for now, but Bendel ever more putting on the pressure, trying to find a way around the outside, can't do it. Trying to find a way down the inside. Well, there is no inside to go to. Good battle between the Mercedes and the Red Bull crew. And is it Dirty Spy? It is. Had a bit of an offing somewhere. And, um... Oh, it's painful. But he's down to P6. Creative Coconut back onto the podium. And uh, consistency is key. I've said it about so many drivers. But if Creative Coconut can cradle it to at least a P4, that would be brilliant for the Haas team in their uh, Constructors Championship push. Forrest Jump then, he needs every point he can get if he wants to stop Rayner winning another title. But can he do it? Shotmaker and Spinzy having a bit of a to-do at the back there. Shotmaker coming out victorious because Spinzy's still ghosting. Interesting. Bendel, Slipstream on Spinzy. He's also got a Slipstream on Shotmaker as well. I don't really know what's going on with the ghosting thing. But uh, he's been overtaken by Bendel now as well. Interesting shot maker and Bendel going at it. Bendel on the inside. Shot maker just about getting away. And Spinzy just morphing through people every now and then. Right, here's Rainer then. And you see him in the rear wing. Nine tenths the gap. Eight and a half tenths the gap. Into breaking. Pretty equal lines there. But somehow... Minions is just faster? He bare exit speeds, I imagine. But uh, Rainer keeping him on his toes this time. Trying to get up the order. Creative Coconut happy to cruise along in third place. Not really trying to push too much because there's no need. Forest Jump, he needs to push. He needs to get past Creative Coconut. And I mean, it's, it's difficult because... Like, I don't think Forrest Jump could catch up to Rayner. But he needs to try. He needs to do everything he can because at the moment, no one's really brought the fight to Rayner the whole season. Mikhail was uh, on a little redemption, but um, he's, he's lost it. He, he, well, he's not lost it, but he's not here. You know, it, I, I'm sure there's, there's a good reason for it. Obviously, Aurora Racing League is uh, not as significant in people's lives and other things, of course. That makes sense. But, um, yeah, I mean... He's not here. He's not showing. Here's Forrest Jump, then, on Creative Coconut. He won't waste any time. He'll try not to, at least. No DRS. DRS enabled this lap. But the Red Bull driver gets past. You can see in the rear wing, Creative Coconut will just be cautious. <coughs> <coughs> God, my throat's starting to feel it now. And, um... <clears throat> Forest jump up to P3, podium play, paying position, and Rayner, DRS on minions, is there a glimpse? Is there a chance for Rayner? Is he thinking the wind's still on here? Maybe. Just maybe. Dirty Spy putting Weimar under a lot of pressure. Not finding a way through just yet. Bendel putting Shotmaker under a bit of pressure, not finding a way through either. Weemar getting a lot on the curbs there. And uh, Dirty Spy just keeping it more tidy. 
No penalties yet this whole race. Drivers have been doing well, what can I say? So avoid track limit violations. Down the inside goes Dirty Spy. He saw the opening. He's forced a little bit wide from Weimar. But they don't touch. Weimar on quicker tyres. But Dirty Spy on quicker pace. And tagging the wall by, I'd like to say, not too much. Bit of a minuscule margin. But the entire front wing of that Alpine comes off. And uh, that is not good for Weimar. At all. You can see Rayner. And this is actually quite good indeed. He doesn't have a lot of ERS left. But he has DRS on Minions. And Minions is going to have to start thinking. Because Rayner is getting close. Forrest jump. With the fastest lap of the race. If Forrest can bring the fight to these two. I'd be very impressed. Now Minions isn't as confident as Urn. We'll have to, we'll, we'll, we'll have to see. I'm sure he's still pretty confident behind the wheel. Um, I imagine we'll just see a bit of DRS, but with only four laps to go, anything still up for grabs in this uh, Azerbaijan Grand Prix? I mean, Minions, he's had it under control all race. Will he lose it at the end? I don't think so, but there's always a possibility. Rainer needs to keep in the DRS more than anything here. He desperately needs to stay in the DRS. Why is this race 10 times shorter than Singapore? Uh, longer laps. Yeah, well, that, that's the answer. But also, it feels a lot shorter, doesn't it? Like, I'm not sure if Beast means, like, why is it shorter laps-wise? Or why did it, it just feel short? Because this, I mean, maybe, maybe time flies by when you're having fun. Because there's been a lot of people to interact with in chat. And I really do appreciate it. Now it feels short. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm thinking. Singapore was... Oh, that was brutal. To commentate, Bendel! Bendel's gone. Bendel retired. No way. Another safety car. And Bendel's just in the wall. Oh, no. That's a big crash. And both Mercedes are out. And once again, the Mercedes curse strikes... I think we'll have one lap of racing or two laps of racing, but it won't be long. You think it doesn't end under the safety car in F120. They don't do it in this game. Um, it'll be one or two laps, I imagine one. Um, but they don't, they never end under the safety car. Honestly, you could have, you could have half the grid's cars explode in a fiery pit of inferno on the last lap of the race and they wouldn't pull out a safety car. They just wouldn't do it. It doesn't, it's not in the coding for this game. Abu Dhabi 2021 flashback. God, don't remind me. I'm open. Well, I'm not really open because I don't really ever talk about real life F1 on, this, uh, on these streams. But as a Lewis Hamilton fan, that haunts me. <laughs> it really does. Luckily, we won't have anything like that happen again. Hopefully. <laughs> oh. Damn. That was podium. Double has podium. Absolutely. Hang on a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. Has Minions... Hang on a minute. I'm confused now. Minions pit for fresh shots. This is the most insane... He's got the pace. He can definitely do it. Creative coat. Oh, my God, my voice. I love you guys, but you, you're going gonna to be the death of my voice. No, um... I don't know, because... He has to get through two people in one lap. On the soft tyres, I imagine he can do it. But it, it's still going to be... It's not going to be easy. I swear to God, if Minions start piping up in this chat, it's ridiculous. Coconut has to be driver of the day. I, I I don't know if it's acceptable for me to vote on driver of the day. But I, I do it anyway. And I'm going to keep... I always keep my votes to myself. As you should. But um, I, I, I always do vote on my driver of the day. I'll be open about it. And do you know what? I'll start doing commentators drive of the day if you want at the end. What? what trying to get some over... Minions just, just doing it for the fun now. Jesus. Right. <clears throat> do, what, what do you guys think? Do you think I should do a uh, commentators driver of the day at the end? I was probably voted driver of the day by, by me in Brazil. Probably. Right, yeah. It'd be nice to have your opinion. Brilliant. Well, yes. That's some good positive feedback. 
I will be doing that. I've also thought this is a bit, this is a bit out there. I would love, I would absolutely love to do post-race. Oh, debris flying off a car in the background there. Weimar gets a five-second time on it. You saw that. You definitely saw that. And oh, no, no, no. Is this Dirty Spy? Is this Dirty Spy? With damage? No, it's not. Who's got the damage? Oh, my goodness. He, he's done it again. <laughs> he's done it again. Weimar, his front wings. I feel bad for the, I feel bad for the Alpine pick for now. I mean, <laughs> all right, we might. I, I, do you know what? You just do you, mate. But Minion, I know. Yeah, you're saying it. What's spinning? I think. I mean, unless I think it restarts, especially on this game, are always going to be chaotic. We might first want to pick up a penalty all race as well for that collision. Loses his front wing. He's lost more front wings than he has in seconds of time penalties. Ridiculous. It's all jokes, we might, don't worry, mate. <laughs> but um I think I think there's always gonna be contact. Is it a racing incident? Maybe I didn't I, I come on, I didn't even see it to be honest. I, I don't remember it because there's so much that happens and I'm always trying to focus on the front runners and stuff. Minions we challenge a teammate. Dirty break checking. I've got I've got no idea what's gone on at the back because I kind of look at the front on safety cars, so I just saw a, a front wing. Anyway, going back to your point. Post race, I'll definitely do my driver of the day at the end. But also post race interviews, I'd love to do that. It's mental. It's such a mental idea. But I think it'd be a lot easier to do now with the Discord integration with PlayStation. Um. Still, yeah, I don't, I don't know. But I, I would love a post race interview. Can I do it even though I didn't race? What a post race interview! <laughs> right, safety cars in this lap. We'll have, we'll have two laps of racing. Here we go. This is what you want to see. Michael Massey. Ah, uh, Ted Kravitz, like, like David Coulthard at the end. Right, Michael Massey's made a good call. Two laps of racing to end the race. Boris Jump was probably hoping that would not be the case. When does he go? Is the question. He'll slow them down as much as he can. But he's got the two Hasses behind him. And he's going very slowly indeed. When does he go? He might have left it too late to go, you know. He goes to the inside and he, he throttles away. It's foot to the floor. And away we go again. Rainer up to P3 and he gets ahead of Minions. This is huge. This is huge. Rainer up to P2. Who's this on the outside though? It's Minions on the fresh soft tyres. Unbelievable stuff. He gets back ahead. Rainer can't do anything about it for the time being. What can Rainer do now? He did get ahead of Minions, but he needed to keep that place. But if these two keep fighting, this is huge for the championship. Forrest Jump needs this weight race victory more than anything. And I fear it for him and for his sake that he won't get it because look at the pace that Minions has. One and a half laps is all he needs. But does he have the time? He needs the cars behind to fight, but it's not going to happen. Forrest Jump, will he defend like an absolute madman? I've always complimented him on how he just lets the faster cars by because he doesn't want trouble. But I don't think that's going to be today. We ride on board with a hash driver now. He is absolutely bucking it here. Three tenths the gap. This is for the lead of the race. He goes into the braking zone, gets it slowed down brilliantly. Rayner is going to have to put him under immense pressure if Forrest Jump wants any chance of keeping this race wi uh, win. But I just don't think that it's going to happen. Because look at Minions now. So much more grip through this section. And it's almost written in the stars. Minions is going to get past. And he will just cruise home to victory. Forrest Jump's done everything he's done. And to be fair, it wasn't even a bad strategy call. They're on the inside, but Forrest Jump won't send it back up there. Let's see what Rayner can do. Can he gain one more position and force Forrest Jump down to third? I think there was a bit of contact there and Creative Coconut contact definitely at the back as they were moving around down the inside. He goes on shot maker, but he can't do it and down to P6. It's really unfortunate for Creative Coconut. I know people are saying something about... Uh, dirty. I'm, I'm not sure. Wing damage 100%. I don't. I don't know what's going on. I don't know if I missed something. But with only a few corners of this Grand Prix left, 
Does Reyna have enough to get past Forrest Jump? It's crucial that Forrest Jump stays ahead. He's going to be defending for his life. But I don't think he needs to. Reyna is quite simply too far back at the moment. They're going to go through the castle section now. In Sector 2. And look at this. It's, it's insane. Minions will go and win it, no doubt about that. But Forrest Jump is somehow going to cling on to second. As it stands, can Rayner do a last, last moment push? Well, he might be able to. This is going to be very, very close. Rayner has wing damage, apparently. It doesn't look like he does, but maybe I'm missing something. Look at him now. The gap only five tenths. And I said Forrest Jump might be able to do it. ERS all the way down the street, as you can see. DRS as well. Is Forrest Jump going to be able to hold on to the P2? It's going to be dire. It's going to be so, so close. Who's going to cross the line? It's going to be Forrest Jump. And it could not get closer than that if you wanted it. Rainer P3. Forrest Jump P2. Dirty Spy P4. Shotmaker P5. Creative Coconut finishes P6. Spinzy a long way back P7. And Weemart on his 17th front wing of the day. Finishes and rounds out the grid. I'm just joking, Weemar. <laughs> but um, what an end. What an end. Shotmaker picks up driver of the day. From the game, not from me. I mean, he might pick it up from me. Let's have a look at the stats. But I mean, Minions, that's domination. And then he took the gamble at the end onto the softs. And it just paid out, didn't it? It just paid out. Forrest jump though. To keep hold of that P2 at the end. I don't think you'll see a closer finish than that in a very, very long time. Congratulations, Minions, for another victory here at Aurora Racing. Pure domination. What else can you say? I mean, it was close at the end, but it doesn't represent the whole race, does it? What a drive. For <laughs> just a spectacular driver. But Forrest Jump, I mean, wow. Starts P6, finishes P2. Rayner just missing out at the end. And look at how close they were. You can see it on the timing screen there. A 153, oh, uh, sorry, the gap between those two. So, if someone wants to do the math on that, because I, I can't. <laughs> it's, it, you know, it's, it's like two hundredths of a second. What an end. What an end, separating P2 and P3. Unbelievable. 22. Yep. Yeah. yeah, no, no, that's, that's right. So, good maths. Harlow, thank you. <laughs> thank you for that. That's, appreciate it. I just, my brain doesn't work. All the adrenaline for that finish. And what a finish it was. My driver of the day, I mean, it, it was going to be Creative Coconut, but it, it kind of fell apart a bit at the end. I'm going to have to give it to Forrest Jump. I think that was a really bold strategy call at the end. Um, but Forrest Jump, driver, that, that's my driver of the day. Is the commentator? I don't think he put a foot wrong. I think he, well, I say foot wrong. He made it. He made a one wrong strategy call. But Forrest, in my opinion, he's my driver of the day. Obviously, we have a much more official voting system, but that's just my commentary uh, point of view. Um, what a drive, though, from, from Minions. What a drive from Forrest Jump. What a drive from Rayner. It was so close. It could have gone either way uh, at the end there. But uh, alas, the race can only be won by one. Today, it was... Uh, uh, <laughs> minions. Why am I forgetting this? Um, thank you. Honestly, we've got ten people watching right now. It's not... You know, ten. It doesn't seem like a big number, but I genuinely really do appreciate it. I know I say it a lot now but I don't think you you guys actually understand like it, it does mean a lot to actually stream in front of a like an audience if you know what I mean so I no thank you uh, very much for sticking round I can thank great comment say thank you uh, very much minions well done cheers Paolo and unlucky but good luck for next race oh cheers no I no I do I do appreciate it no honestly yeah, no, I, yeah, anyway, thank you very much. I don't really know what to say, but, you know, thank you. Um, very much, everyone who tuned in, and everyone who raced, 
And um, from me and obviously everyone here, Aurora Racing, cheers, Owen. Um, I wish you a very good morning, evening, or afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Um, but from me, it's good night.